Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the basics of writing a program in C. So if you've been following along with the course, up till this point, we've installed a text editor, we've installed a C compiler, and we set up our first C program and our first C project inside of CodeBlocks. So now, essentially what we have is this file over here. This is that main.c file. I just kind of want to point out a couple things that are in here. Uh, first up here, we have these little instructions, which are just called include. And I'm not going to get too much into what those do in this tutorial. Later on in the course, we're going to talk about what these are actually doing and the specifics of you know, how they're helping our program. But for now, just know that in order for us to use our program, we're going to need to have these guys up there. Next thing we have is this little block of code called main. And it just has this name main, and you can see there's an open and closed parentheses. And this is actually what's called a method. And don't worry too much about what methods are. We're gonna, again, we're gonna talk more about those in the future. But essentially a method is just like a container where we can put some of our code. And this method main is very important because this is the method that's gonna get executed when we run our program. So in C, we can actually write out a bunch of instructions for the computer, and then we can run our program. So we can tell the computer to execute those programs. And whenever the computer executes our C program, it's gonna look inside of this main method. In other words, it's gonna look inside of all the code inside of these open and closed curly brackets, and it's gonna execute that code. So I have this instruction here, it's called printf. And basically this is just printing out some text onto the screen. So when we run our program, it's gonna come into this main method and it's gonna execute all the instructions inside of here, namely this printf method. So if I was to run my program, then this is gonna work. Now let's talk about actually running a program. Whenever we want to run a program that we write in C, we actually have to do two things. The first thing we have to do is what's called building a program or compiling a program. And basically what that does is it takes all of this C code and it translates it into a language that the computer is gonna be able to understand and execute. So it's essentially taking this C program code, translating it into computer code, and then the computer can execute it and run our program. So the first thing we have to do is always build our C file. The second thing we have to do is run the file that gets built. So once we've built this program, we've compiled it down into code the computer can understand, we have to run it, basically tell the computer to execute that code. And in code blocks, it's actually really easy to do this. So we can come over here and this little gear icon will allow us to build our program. And then this play button will allow us to run our program. But a lot of times when you're programming, you're gonna want to build and run your code at the same time, right? You're just gonna wanna build it and run it just to see what happened, you know, see how your program did. So we have this option over here called build and run. And this will both build your program and run it at the same time. So generally, as you're going through this course, you're going to want to be using this option, this build and run option. So when I click this, it'll essentially build my program, run it, and then it'll show up here on this little window. And this little window is basically a console window, you could call it. So a lot of people would refer to this as the console and it'll just like output any information that we tell it to. So if we write a C program that doesn't output information, that doesn't print anything to the screen, then we wouldn't actually see this. But since we're using this printf command, that window is gonna pop up. So let's talk about how these programs actually get executed. Essentially, when we write a program, we have a set of instructions. So when I'm writing a C program, I'm basically writing out a set of instructions. Imagine you were writing like a recipe or something, right? A recipe is essentially just a set of instructions that when executed correctly will result in, you know, cooking or baking something delicious, right? And that's basically what these C programs are. It's a set of instructions that when executed correctly will result in the computer doing something for us. And one of the cool things about computers is that we can program them to do anything. And C is one of the best languages to do that with. So let's look at this instruction over here. It's called printf. And like I said, this prints something out onto the screen. But you'll notice over here at the end, we have this semicolon. And this semicolon is actually really important. So whenever we write an instruction in C, we always wanna end it off with a semicolon. That tells C that we're done with that instruction and we wanna move on to the next one. So I could actually copy this instruction and I could paste it down here. 
And now we're basically going to be executing this instruction twice. So if I was to run and build my program, you'll see that we're not only printing it out once, but we're also printing it out twice. So when we run our program, the program comes down into this main method and it looks at all the instructions inside of it. So it starts with this first instruction, it executes it, right? So it prints out hello world onto the screen and then it also prints out a new line. So this backslash n is like a new line character and that'll move the text onto a new line. When it's done with this instruction, it moves on to the next instruction and it'll execute that instruction. So as we go forward and we learn how to write in C, we're gonna learn more and more complex instructions. And we'll be able to use all those instructions in conjunction with each other to specify some seriously complex programs. But for now, this is really the only instruction that we know, which is printf. So why don't we use this printf instruction in order to draw out a little shape onto the screen. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can draw out like a little triangle onto the screen. I'm gonna take this printf and I'm actually just gonna get rid of hello world and I'm gonna copy this a couple times. So I'm just gonna copy it and we'll paste it down here, maybe four times. And what I can do is I can specify instructions to the computer that will tell it to draw out a particular shape. So down here I could make like a forward slash and over here we'll make another one and I'll make another one and I'll make another one. And you can see here I've drawn like a little diagonal line with these forward slashes. Now I'm gonna draw vertical bars going all the way down. So I'm gonna put one here, I'm gonna put one here, I'll put one here, and finally, why don't we draw some underscores and then we'll put one. So I'm basically drawing out a little triangle shape. And these backslash ends are just printing out a new line. So anytime I print this, it's gonna move it onto a new line. So it'll print this guy out now on the line down, the line below. So if I was to save my program and execute it, now the computer is gonna go through, it's gonna execute each one of these instructions in order and we'll be able to print out the shape onto the screen. So let's do that. You'll see over here we get our shape. And one thing I really wanna stress is that order matters. So if I took this instruction and I placed it up here as the first instruction, now this is gonna get printed out first. So when I run my program, you'll see that we're printing out this kind of funky looking shape. And that's because we changed up the order of the instructions, so the computer changed the order in which it executed those instructions. And you'll notice here, again, we're using this semicolon after each line of code. So that's kind of the basics of writing a program. That's essentially all you need to know. When we're writing a program, we're specifying a list of instructions that we want the computer to carry out. And depending on which instructions we give the computer and which order we give them and how complex the instructions are, that'll determine what the program does. And as we go through this course, we're gonna learn more and more complex instructions. We're also gonna learn how we can take simple instructions like printf and do different things with them to make our programs a lot more powerful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.